Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining our public lecture today. We respectfully acknowledge that SFU Burnaby is located on unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, including the Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, Squamish, and Musqueam nations. And I'm honored to be joining you from Invermere, BC, the shared unceded home of the Squamic, the Kiskanuk, and Tanaha Nation, and the chosen homeland of the Columbia Valley Métis. Since 1989, SFU's Community Economic Development Program, or SFU-CED, as we like to call it for short, has been a leader in bringing about social, ecological, and economic change. Researchers refer to a set of five principles that help differentiate CED from other traditional forms of economic development. And while accredited by EDAC, uh, or Economic Developers Association of Canada, and Canadian Credit Union Association, just a few months ago, we are pleased to announce today that our, our program has just been accredited by CANDU for their TAID certifications. This is huge news for recent grads current students, and future students. And this new accreditation wouldn't be possible if just last year, SFU CED instructors, Chappell Montsiem, Hugh Lianjo, the Squamish Nation, and Lily Raphael wrote Step Into the River, a framework for economic reconciliation. They proposed that to the extent to which economic reconciliation can be transform more transformative depends on whether we ourselves are willing to transform. For our economy to shift, we need to rethink what we value, how we relate to one another, and how we make decisions. This framework offers a set of values, fundamental practices, and ideas for action to create an impact and embrace transformation. We invite you to step into the river, consider and integrate economic reconciliation into your Jane's Walk this year, and be part of the journey after today's public lecture. Wesley, Geraldine, thanks for joining us today, and feel free to take it away. Without further ado, yeah, we're here to talk about Jane's Walk. So um, thank you, Ryan, for the uh, amazing introductions. I'll just uh, quickly say, um, yeah, we're here on behalf of the Jane's Walk Steering Committee. So our steering committee is a group of nine volunteers that oversee the Toronto Festival and acts as a global convener. We assist with organizations, uh, sorry, with the organization and assistance with festivals around the world. And we've just rebuilt our global website. Um, we assist in cross Canada and global meetups to discuss the festival each year. And uh, to make this happen, we fund years, fundraise year round as we're 100% uh, donor funded. And a good portion of us are located here in Toronto or Takaronto, Ontario. We're also uh, throughout Canada and some of us in Europe. So um, before we go any further, I just want to start us off with a land acknowledgement. So our cities, our communities and neighborhoods can play a vital role in providing shared spaces for all people and are an important space for reconciliation and decolonization. City builders uh, and urban leaders can play key roles on questioning and unlearning colonial structures, fostering long-term relationship building, creating space for learning and healing processes, and shared space with those whose traditional territory is the land we're standing on or walking on today. Decolonization requires us to observe structures of power, critique and redis uh, redistribute power whenever we can. It requires active listening to unique needs, experiences, and the priorities of the Indigenous people of Turtle Island and uh, beyond to other Indigenous nations. Thank you so much. So I'm going to pass it to G uh, to give us a little uh, introduction to what Jane's Walk is all about for all those on the call today that um, may have not heard of us before. Thanks so much, Wes, and uh, thanks. Great to be with you all as well. Um, and I assume too that we're, so I, I probably have to direct you to, to forward the slides, but I'm totally okay with that. So for those that aren't really familiar with Jane's Walk, we'll just do a quick overview. It's an annual festival of free community-led walking conversations inspired by Jane Jacobs. I'm not sure how many folks here are Jane Jacobs fans or have read any of her work. Uh, she was a journalist, an author, a theorist, and an activist. Um, these, uh, and so Jane's work was started in her honor, it, uh, falls traditionally uh, on the, work, the weekend closest to her birthday, the first weekend in May. Um, so these volunteer-led walks uh, get people out to tell their stories about their communities, explore their cities, and connect with neighbors. Um, so this is a quote from Jane that gets thrown worldwide um, and is important because it sort of sets the spirit of the Jane's Walks uh, perfectly. Cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. 
Uh, just to tell you a little more about Jane, she was an American-born writer and activist, as I said, best known for her writings about cities. And her first book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, upended the ideas of the kind of modernist city planning and building uh, prevalent at the time and offered a new vision for diverse, fine-grained cities made for and by ordinary people. Um, so... We love Jane. We love Jane too. I must admit that although I am living now in Alberta in um, Drayton Valley, I actually spent the last 17 years of my life living in Toronto and from Australia, from Melbourne originally. So I'm a, definitely more of a city. Uh, I have much more familiarity with cities and we love that Jane moved from New York City to Toronto and made that her uh, home as well. Um, there she published uh, six more major books about cities, economics, ethics, governance, and culture. Two of them were Canadian bestsellers. Um, so with a keen eye for detail, she wrote eloquently uh, about sidewalks, parks, retail design, and self-organization. And at the core of her work always, um, was thinking ab about the need to get out and walk your city, observe how people are, observe how they move. Um, I was just thinking about that now. It's kind of like um, that kind of these days we talk about sort of behavioral economics and we talk about design thinking and all of those things. Really, she was at the forefront of a lot of this stuff, even the sort of ethnographic research that we talk about sometimes in, in our work as well. So she was out there in front a long way before us. So uh, that's a little bit about Jane. Um, so she had, uh, like you have your CED five principles, um, she too had these sort of 10 big ideas. Um, I'm not going to read through all of these slides, and I think we'll share them with you all afterwards anyway. Um, but what I wanted to draw attention to was just how well they fit into the uh, community economic de development principles as well. So as you look at the slides there and the 10 big ideas, thinking about uh, community economic de development principle one, which is bring livelihoods focused, uh, being livelihoods focused means treating the economy as a tool for increasing the well-being and quality of life for everyone in our communities. And you see a lot in her principles th there, the 10 big ideas, things around social capital, generators of diversity, um, uh, and mixed use, uh, mixed use spaces, eyes on the street. Um, also, CED number two principle, diversity and inclusion are essential to community economic development, not only because they right historical wrongs, but also because they improve the ability for the economy to move to be more equitably to deliver more equitably benefits to everyone, regardless of who they are. So that's another one too. As you move through there, Wes, we also have um, community economic development principle four, being place-based. Um, CED uses a place-based approach, which acknowledges that all development is local and must grow from local strengths and assets. These are perfectly in line with uh, the Jane Jacobs uh, top 10 ideas around uses of streets and cities. CED principle three and five, sustainable and community controlled. These are perfectly encapsulated in the, um, in the Jane Jacobs uh, 10 principles as well. Gradual money, cities organize, their cities are organized complexity. Um, make many little plans. The diversity of a good neighborhood can only be achieved when we allow many different people to pursue their own little plans individually and collectively. Lots of these things all just blending nicely together too. So um, I'm gonna throw it back to Wes and talk specifically about um, uh, Jane's walks uh, and uh, moving away from Jane Jacobs, who uh, we obviously love. So thanks so much, Wes. Thanks, G. Um, yeah, so um, Jane's Walk was founded um, in uh, 2006 as a living walking um, commemoration of Jane Jacobs and her legacy. This was initiated by her close friends and family members and really wanting to honor her ideas. 
So since 2006, the festival has grown in size exponentially, and it really is a way for, as we've mentioned, is a way for communities to share stories, to city build in places all around the world. So in May, um, but it doesn't always have to take place during the festival either. I just want to put that point out. So if you don't make it uh, this year to a Jane's Walk, you can always throw one or do a walk on your own time, your own terms at any point in the year. Um, but since um, in May or uh, since we uh, have uh, tens of thousands of people walk all over the world that take part in Jane's Walk. So just to kind of give you a bit more finer detail to that. Um, yeah, we have 17 years late, uh, later since uh, beginning Jane's Walk, we have seen over uh, 2000 plus walks around the world in over 500 plus cities in over 46 countries and across six continents. So um, pretty cool. Um, and uh, this is really, I, I, I wanna talk a bit about um, Jane's Jacobs Principles, which um, was also started as kind of guideposts for um, the Jane's Walk uh, Festival and for Jane's Walk. Um, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but Jane's Walk really is a place for civic conversations, for urban issues, a true love for community and for neighborhood pride. Um, it, it's really a festival of volunteerism. These walks give a chance uh, for residents um, to share their knowledge and speak frankly about their neighborhood and share hidden histories with other local citizens and communities. So uh, Jane's Walk helps knit people together into strong, resourceful communities, instilling belonging and encouraging civic leadership. It connects people to the places where they live, work and play. Um, it convenes conversation and highlights different voices and perspectives. And it holds space for people to exercise power and agency um, as active, engaged members of their community. And lastly, and I think this is all the more important now as we see political divides um, in Canada, abroad, and everywhere else, it also helps to dismantle walls um, created by distance, difference, and apathy, and create social cohesion. So, um, Kind of just want to say it's not just a North American thing either. I know I've already covered that in my last slides, but just to kind of give you um, a clue or, or some photos of um, some of the places it takes place around the world. Um, uh, it It's on every continent um, and we've seen um, and spoke to many of these festivals. Um, and even years ago, prior to me joining the committee and maybe G, um, you can speak a bit to this. We even had a meetup here in Toronto um, mm -hmm. years ago where we brought some Jane's Walk leaders from around the world to kind of meet and talk around their festivals. Do you want to quickly give a, a quick uh, like two minute uh, talk about what, what that looked like? Yeah, well, it was a pretty special event because uh, we had some funding through a foundation in the United States. Um, this is when we had a paid staff position, so obviously made a little bit of a difference just to coordinate such a thing. Uh, but we were able to invite in and fly in uh, some city organizers from around the world. So it was very exciting and, and just had a chance, I think, What's made possible now, obviously, and I think particularly strengthened through uh, the necessity of uh, video chats during the pandemic, but this was pre-pandemic. So having people come into a room together um, for the first time and share stories and insights was really special. So, yeah, I think it's just that power of connection that made this offering, which for many people is a volunteer offering, um, that they drive from their own place, wherever that is in the world. Um, this gave them a chance to say, oh, I'm not alone. Like there's actually lots of folks that are doing this as well. And it's totally worth the sweat because isn't this amazing? So yeah, that's just a bit about what that was like. Thank you, G. And yeah, through um, Jane Jacobs writing, she really offered an early view um, on ideas of city life, what made it worthwhile for local passerbyers or local residents. And she argued that the magnetism of cities was what made people want to come out into the city and to linger there. She told readers, um, you've got to get out and walk, which is obviously something that we hold dearly. Um, and it's... Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's 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 a festival that takes place in places in Africa, India, Australia, the UK, China, and beyond. And it's, I think, one of the like benefits of being chair is I actually get to see all those emails and get to see some of the socials and get to connect to some of those leaders, uh, community leaders uh, that really are 
sparking conversation and changing their community. Um, so that's, I think, something that I, I feel very privileged to um, to see. So going deeper um, into that, kind of how Jane's Walk really allows folks to bring their lived and living experience forward. Um, we stand by and Jane's Walk is all about anyone can be a walk leader because everyone is an expert on the places that they live, work and play. So what do I mean by this? Well, anyone can be a walk leader because everyone is an expert um, of where they live. Um, do you know something about anything? Know nothing about something? Lead a Jane's Walk. Anyone can be a uh, lead a Jane's Walk and everyone should. Leading a Jane's Walk is a fun, informal way to speak your truth, share things you know, and learn things you don't. Walk leaders aren't credentialed experts. They're ordinary, interested citizens. They're a diverse bunch and they have three things in common. One, they know things. They're experts in their own experiences and interests um, and they want to share what they know with about urban foraging, laneways, accessibility, parks, paper planes, bike lanes, police carting, eccentric houses, birds, bees, gentrification, poetry, sex, death, and taxes with one another. Um, <laughs> number two, uh, they don't know things. Walk leaders convene walking conversations. These are not lectures. Where a walk leader encounters questions or knowledge gaps, participants pipe in with their own information and perspectives. And number three, they love their city. They know that living in a city means being part of an enthralling, indefinable ecosystem of people, places, stories, and truths, all living shoulder to shoulder. They know that the more we learn from each other and uh, the and the more we learn about each other and from each other, the stronger we are. So um, I'm not going to go fully into all the principles because uh, that would take all day, um, but I'm going to kind of quickly touch about uh, some of them. So as I mentioned earlier, the founders created principles to use as guideposts for how Jane's Walk could look like and the do's and don'ts of what makes up this initiative. Um, when these principles were created in 2006, they were hyper-focused on Jane Jacobs to really celebrate her legacy and ideas of the urban activist and writer that we've spoken so much about today. But uh, in the early days of lockdown in the pandemic, our steering committee committed deeply to ideating and brainstorming through uh, embedding equity deeper um, and really having conversations on how things have changed in 17 years, how our present day towns and cities and communities have vastly transformed and have unique and different needs and challenges. So over the last few years, we've taken a greater approach uh, to really deeper embed that intersectionality that existed in the principles, but perhaps was not so explicitly written all those years ago. So um, as mentioned, these are some of the ones that were um, made in the past. We took time to critically analyze them. And um, some of the newer ones that I'll speak to are, um, I won't read them all out, but yeah, Jane's Walk is volunteer driven. It's inspired and informed by the world around us. Um, there's no one way to lead a Jane's Walk or run a festival or walk. Jane's Walk can happen at any time and can be a virtual conversation, an activation of public space, an audio cast, a paddle, a bike ride, an accessible tour with um, assistive devices. Really, the possibilities are endless. And a more explicit addition to the principles are Jane's Walk creates an opportunity to hear all voices. So Jane's Walk creates a space where community members with different viewpoints can share their perspectives. And as a platform for these voices to be heard, Jane's Walk directly addresses and takes a stance against hate speech, racism, xenophobia, oppression, and discrimination. And the intent of Jane's Walk is not to prescribe Jane Jacobs teachings or uh, on city making or urban planning or economics, but rather to promote dialogue, discussion, and debate on them. So lastly, Jane's Walk encourages reflection about the history and habitation of city building. We prompt questions about who, who is being displaced or marginalized in a particular space in a critical investigative way. And uh, Jane's Walk can inspire dialogue on ways of moving uh, to ward greater equity together. So I'll just speak for another few slides and I'm gonna pass it to G. Um, but yeah, the power of Jane's Walk. Really, Jane's Walk is so much more than just walking tours, which I'm hoping you're, uh, some of you are grasping uh, through what we're speaking today. It's a form of city building, and those who usually take part have an interest and care for the design of cities and the places that they live. Participants are active neighborhood dwellers who want to participate in dialogue about their cities, 
and most have a desire to build and nurture a future where communities and their neighborhoods are a place for social capital, equitable for all, and in investing their time and energy to see their neighborhoods as prosperous. So going back to the title of uh, our, our uh, talk today, um, what exactly is human-centered design or participatory design? Um, and most of you may know, um, some of you may not. So, um, and how does it exactly relate to Jane's Walk? So I wanted to bring up an example um, and talk a bit more about that. So uh, human-centered design or participatory design is really about discovering the behaviors, motives, and needs for specific communities. And part of its success is people knowing that the design of their local area is a direct reflection of them, not just a one-size-fits-all presumption. It also puts power into the hands of community. And this is all the more important in disinvested neighborhoods and where equity deserving people who traditionally haven't been invited to the decision making tables um, are invited in to lead conversation to bring about their own uh, power to their local community. Now, I have an example of an art project that isn't a Jane's Walk, but I see it as a really great, clear example of participatory design that I wanted to share. Um, so, an artist Candy Chang in um, 2010 used stickers much like the ones you'd have on a, a shirt at a conference or if we were doing this in person that would say, hello, my name is. Um, these stickers said, I wish this was dot, dot, dot. And she posted these on vacant buildings in New Orleans, allowing folks, residents and communities to dream and share their hopes for spaces. Um, so some of them wrote a local grocer, a local... Um, deli shop, a uh, donut flower shop, Brad Pitt's house, um, but really allowing folks to really create vision and dream about a future where they're part of and one that they want to be part of. So Jane's Walk works in a really similar way. When someone leads a Jane's Walk, it isn't a pre uh, presentation, as we mentioned, but really a conversation. And really that whole idea of sharing insights, thoughts, dreams, wishes, and challenges of the neighborhood is really at the um, at, at the pit of like what Jane's Walk is. And um, uh, earlier this year, uh, my co-chair Celia and myself uh, met with Jim Jacobs, Jane's uh, son, to kind of speak about where we are now with Jane's Walk. And uh, a metaphor for what he brought up, what Jane's Walk is, I, I really love and I still stand by, that he really said it's a personal soapbox, if you will. It's the idea that like, we don't have the same civic square as we may have a hundred years ago. It's the way to stand upon something and you know, speak of it loudly and tell your experience in the city. So um, with that, um, the idea of walking conversations, the idea of reciprocity and sharing space with other voices and is really integral to Jane's Walk. And collaboration and sharing space is really at the heart of um, Jane's Walk. But before I go any further, I'm gonna pass it back to G to kind of just speak a bit more about the economy of cities. Um, and a bit about social capital before I speak about some specific examples of our Toronto Festival and how that relates uh, to community economics. Thanks, Wes. I'm just uh, checking on time here. We'll scoot through these two, but obviously uh, we're having a community economic development conversation, so we want to talk about the economy of cities. Um, Jane Jacobs believed cities are hubs, engines, a place for innovation, new ways of doing things. Cities are places for creativity, culture, and diversity of all, but, but also a place where problems show up, which stimulate people to critique, study, and solve those problems. She believed in the power of local economies, the power of strong communities, and the idea of the corner store. And these beliefs boil down to a resource that is really more valuable than money. Um, and that is really around the idea of social capital. Um, the need for social capital and the need to belong impacts our experience of the world every day. Uh, it can literally mean the difference between getting to a hospital on time in an emergency or being able to lean on a friend when you can't quite make rent. Um, this was a study by the Knight Foundation. Actually, it was the Knight Foundation that funded that uh, trip too for everybody to come to Toronto. So ah, they're good people there at the Knight Foundation. Um, they found that communities with higher levels of social capital, which includes measures of trust, social networks, and community engagement, experience greater economic growth, higher levels of entrepreneurship, and more effective government. Um, these studies here, which I'm not going to read out, were all just reinforce uh, the importance of this magic ingredient. 
actually, in many ways, social capital is both the ingredient going in and the outcome of a Jane's walk. And higher social capital leads to positive community and economic development outcomes. Um, this is all possibly things you're already aware of. But anyway, why now, though, uh, does Jane's walk still resonate with people? Why now in 2023, especially as we think of uh, the ideas around uh, the generation of greater social capital. The percentage of people who report they volunteered for any organization in the past 12 months declined by 12 percentage points between 2018 and 2022, from 37% to 25%, which is similar to the Canadian average. Um, social capital encompasses the concept of community or collective social vitality, the extent to which people engage with others in groups and organizations above and beyond their family and friendship networks. So civic engagement like Jane's Walk can knit people together, creating spaces for groups with similar and different interests to interact, can break down social isolation that is at an all time high in Canada and across North America. Um, those with disabilities, racialized, new, racialized people, new, newcomers, um, uh, people from the 2SLGBTQ plus community all face higher cases of social isolation and rising cases of mental health, uh, poor mental health and the need for more social capital, more connection and more sense of belonging. So as our need to address intersectional barriers to belonging are highlighted more in 2023 than ever, so too is the need for activities like Jane's Walk as relevant as ever. Um, so I'm gonna turn it back to West too to talk through the power of Jane's Walk through a case realized uh, the Jane's Walk experience in Toronto. Thanks, Wes. Thank you. Um, so yes, just being uh, weary of time, I will uh, try to, uh, move through some of these slides a bit quicker. Um, but yeah, Jane's Walk has, um, so really using Toronto as an example, as we know the city um, quite well, uh, being kind of um, uh, the uh, fostering its uh, existence for the last uh, 17 years. Um, over the last few years, I just, um, we have partnered and supported BIAs, neighborhood associations and urban studies uh, schools uh, to really um, lead accessible walks, assist in initiating um, cultural programming, heightening uh, new audiences to businesses and local um, local gems, hidden gems in neighborhoods. Um, we also have been able to provide a platform for local businesses, neighborhoods to present their local goods, reach local audiences um, and citizens and connect key research um, as well to the urban landscape. So um, just a few really quick examples of this. Um, I won't read through all of them, um, but, Three uh, awesome ones uh, that uh, we tend to bring up on occasion is um, one, um, we partnered in the past few years with Trinity Bellwoods BIA. Um, this is a big neighborhood along uh, the Queen West neighborhood, the West End of Toronto. Um, and a past walk included um, a Made in Canada tour where Jane's Walk folks were able to go into local businesses that made handmade goods or local goods that were made here in Canada or here in Toronto. They were able to see a local material store, you know, make local dresses and take part in that kind of experience. Um, the, this one um, was, I think, back in 2019 and had over 50 participants per day um, with over 110 small businesses um, promoted. Um, it was a two hour walk and six local businesses shared and provide tours of the stories. Second one would be, um, we partnered with uh, the Waterfront BIA last year and this year um, to also highlight uh, local businesses. So again, um, over 130 small businesses were promoted. This was a fully accessible walk. Um, and they were able to assist in um, our festival. And it, it even included um, a ride on a boat over the harbor um, to kind of also focus on the beauty of our waterfront as well. And then last but not least, and this is actually one of my favorite examples to share. Um, this is from a local illustrator. So they did a tour called Do or Diner, Greasy Spoons of Toronto's West End. Um, so this walk highlighted local mom and pop shop diners in Toronto that during the lockdown, um, sorry, that uh, 
during the lockdown of the pandemic. This is when their walk um, had happened. So Flycatcher Press, a local printmaker, otherwise known as Phoebe Todd Parish, initiated this walk as a response to the hundreds of small locally owned food institutions in the city of Toronto that were closing their doors due to um, lockdowns and uh, an ongoing pandemic. Um, she really wanted to capture a lot of them before they disappeared. So her walk and her prints were such a hit, a local business focusing on highlighting Toronto, the spacing store, landed her a business contract to sell her illustrations, which is now her largest supplier and moneymaker of her prints. Also, she's paid it forward and has became a monthly donor to Jane's Walk as well. So full circle, um, an, a local artist trying to highlight some gems in community, then leading to her business doing better, which then she paid it forward back to Jane's Walk as well. So I um, love that example. And I think it's um, a cool, very personal one, a little less, um, a little more nuanced than like the BIAs, for example. So just a few other things um, in the past few years when we couldn't hit the streets, we want to ensure deeper conversations on issues affecting our cities. Um, and we started roundtables or what I jokingly call the Jane's Talks. Um, so we have some panel discussions, um, some of them being uh, we had one called Lawrence Heights, a community in between about mass gentrification of a neighborhood and um, those affected by it. We had Toronto, a food city for everyone about Toronto's food culture and demystifying the mitting, missing middle with um, Annabello, uh, the past deputy mayor and Greg Lintern, the chief planner um, in Toronto. Um, and then this year, and this one may um, make uh, folks happy, we actually are focusing our festival on a very youth focus this year, getting youth more involved in um, the ideas of how our cities exist. So we have a walk on entrepreneurship through the arts. Um, so they'll be uh, discussing uh, youth city building as well um, on a separate panel at a local nonprofit called the Bentway, which takes has a uh, that's located under our Gardner Expressway. Um, so that that one will also be taking um, place in the lead up to our festival. And these panels, this is the first year we're actually doing them in person. We've only done them digitally in the past few years as kind of um, a pivot during uh, the Jane's Walk Festival season. And uh, we're also having our first in-person event here in the city. So what does this all lead to? Um, per year, we usually have 150 citywide programs um, that happen. Some of those could be movie screenings. Some of those can be those panels. Most of them are walks. Um, this can look very different in every city. And every city is just as powerful, even if it only has two walks. So um, we always say from murmur to movement, from a small whispering murmur, uh, to a large movement. Um, both of those uh, are just as strong. Um, and uh, our reach in Toronto is, um, and this doesn't include our global channels, is over 250 social impressions. We usually are in a lot of our local newspapers and uh, media outlets. And many councillors, many um, politicians, city folks, and of course, community take part. Um, and uh, even back in the early, I actually have it right here. Um, 2011. Uh, oh, and my screen's blurry. But if you could see it, uh, Toronto decreed uh, Jane, uh, May 4th, Jane Jacobs Day in honor of Jane's walk and the work that she did in our city. So I'm going to throw it to G just to talk about a little bit more for all those now coming to being like, well, now I'm interested. How do I lead a Jane's walk? <laughs> I'm going to pass it to G to finish us off around that. Thanks so much, Wes. And yeah, super to see uh, all of that stuff. So of course, you all want to lead a Jane's walk now. Of course, that's what happens. And of course, it doesn't have to be in a big city. It can be in a small town or a region where you want to get out and uh, explore your surroundings in more detail. So um, we definitely want to encourage that. And Wes has gone over many of the components that sort of could that, you know, that a James Walk could be in his earlier comments, but we certainly want you to, to think about getting out and leading a walk between May 5 and 7 uh, or whenever the fancy takes you. Here's some sample walk names from previous years uh, there on the right of your screen. Um, you know, people are hungry to discover their communities anew. Jane's Walks, and as, as I say, these are really conversation starters. I know... Um, I just, when I first did my first Jane's Walk, I really, um, I wanted to in explore the uh, ideas around social capital and belonging. I was um, reading up on uh, uh, 
if anybody has read the work of Putnam and the idea about um, more and more people moving away from organized uh, community centers or uh, community uh, spaces like clubs and societies and that sort of thing. Um, and so all I did was just take a walk down a particular strip in Toronto that had a number of what I would call classic kind of membership-based places, um, things like churches or the local legion, or um, there's actually a, a place on this strip which was called the, um, the Royal Antediluvian Order of the Buffalo. Um, and there was also a bike uh, a community bike uh, store that where people became members and they fixed each other's bikes and stuff. So what is the idea around belonging um, to these kinds of interest groups or faith-based groups or whatever, and what's being lost without people going into those spaces? So that was something I was interested in. I walked down the street. I found a bunch of places I could go into, even the local library. That's a space for bringing people together. So you do not have to have some magical, you know, idea. This is like whatever strikes your fancy. We've had lots of things that, you know, that can become a Jane's walk. Um, and obviously applying some of your interests in community economic development as well. So all sorts of walks are possible. Um, as we move along through the, you know, this is your story. This is your thing to create. It's your town. Think of the streets, the parks, the rivers, the rooftops, the skate parks, the community centers, the jails. Think of the questions that keep you awake at night or the feeling you get when you catch the bus or the longing sensation each time you pass a certain donut shop. What is it telling you about the walk that you want to lead? You know, there's, it's not just you. I bet there's somebody else out there that's like, oh, yeah, donuts. I want to know about where all the donut shops are. Um, think about what makes you angry, happy, nostalgic, or curious. And then go outside and walk it out. Actually, just uh, go outside and go, oh, I noticed this, that, or, or the other thing. And you can start to stitch together a walk in that way. You only need a, a handful of stops. It doesn't even have to be, uh, you know, I was just thinking about, and I was talking to Wes about this in advance, you know, one of the walks walks that I did once was actually outside the Children's Aid Society in Toronto, where we didn't walk anywhere, but we just uh, listened to stories of uh, mothers who had lost their children to Children's Aid, and we um, tied ribbons in trees. It was one of the most powerful experiences I've I've ever had on a Jane's walk. So really can be anything. Uh, let your, you know, let your curiosity take you where you will. So um, we just re-soft launched our global website. We had a tragic loss uh, <laughs> of our website earlier in the year. It was like a classic systemic failure. I wouldn't say it was as big as a big spaceship exploding. Um, as what happened earlier today, but we did lose our global James Walk website. And so we've had a great pair of uh, working pro bono for James Walk to rebuild the website um, and to try and put all of our uh, cities back uh, onto the website. It's a bit of a work in progress, but we've relaunched now. So it's at janeswalk.org. Um, I encourage you to visit and um, and check it out and email us if you uh, you know want to have your city um, or your walk uh, advertised through the Jane's Walk platform. It may not get onto the website this year, but we can certainly support um, on social media as well too. Um, all right, I think that brings us to the end, Wes. It does. Uh, it totally does. Um, so Amazing. I guess I'll pass it back to uh, Ryan. And yeah, just I want to say thank you for uh, this time today. It's been a, a pleasure. And I can put those emails up on the screen as well into the comments. Um, well, the pleasure is all ours. Uh, thank you so much, Wes. And thank you so much, Geraldine. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, it's inspired me and I've done exactly what you've said in the past where just come out with basically a an eight and a half eleven sheet of paper that says james walk and have a conversation um or conversations all afternoon and and formalize them more over time but 
I encourage everyone here, if they haven't uh, participated on one, do it this year. And if you have, or if you're feeling a little bit more brave, please uh, consider posting your own uh, and, and supporting others to host their own because that's where um, we really move ahead. There's so much, um, so much I wanna talk about, but I'm gonna turn it over to uh, the question and answer period for everyone else here. And please raise your hand or unmute uh, when you're called upon. And if you're not able to speak, feel free to post your comments or questions in the chat and I'll read them in order. And thank you, sorry, I might've frozen there, but thank you so much for including uh, the contact emails as well uh, in the chat. No problem. Any questions or comments from the audience? We promise we're not scary. We won't bite. <laughs> Hi, it's Hillary. I just wanted to say that was such a great um, like sharing time. I think it's one of the better uh, things I've been to and just learning more about it. And it really inspired me to take part in some of the walks coming up. Um, and who knows, maybe next year after going through it, I'll want to lead. But thank you guys both for sharing your experience. Thanks, Hillary. Can I ask you, Hillary, uh, where are you located? Where, um, what, what town, city, place do you uh, reside in? Yes, so I uh, live in Courtney on Vancouver Island, um, but I was just looking and um, some of the walks in Victoria, there's two there that are super interesting. And my colleague is, she was also on this um, and we were messaging back and forth being like, which ones are we going to? So we're very excited. And then just looking at the ones that are offered in like Halifax and Toronto and Vancouver, I just want to go to all of them. They look so great. It's that's one thing that we want to like honor too, um, that we learned from the pandemic is Geraldine brought up like it was so much easier to connect to festivals literally around the world and around Canada. Those meetup calls we found were actually really useful to talk around uh, reconciliation, to talk around uh, challenges we were all facing, to talk around, you know, all of that. So, and on top of that, um, we really want to honor um, the accessibility component of like hybrid festivals. So I think that that's something we're like slowly working on trying to embed deeper into festivals outside of just Toronto, but having components like one of the coolest walks I remember during the pandemic was London and New York partnered where two people went out and did a walk, an architecture walk on Zoom where people could drop into the Zoom room and be like, oh, this is a local church and this is a local cool building. So um, I think there's so many different ways to do it, but I think just in your comment about like, oh, Halifax, I really want to go to that one. I really hope that in the years to come, we can continue to have walks that you can attend in Halifax um, digitally or another way. I love that idea, Wes, and that an example, and also recording the walks. Uh, there's no reason why you can't use your phone and a gimbal or, or steady handed camera person to capture what, what goes on there and, and you know, have Fathom AI take notes later on and, and lead towards uh, further discussions, not just be not just engage with the people that are able to make that brief amount of time and that brief location all together that, that has a lasting or ripple effect mm -hmm. exactly Go I, um, I see a question from ian um do g do you want to take it or do you want me to i can uh, it's fine thanks ian for the question um certainly as we touched on a little bit earlier jane's walks really can happen anytime of course the festival was it's not that we haven't considered doing walks at other times of year. It's just that we chose the week, well, the, her friends who were celebrating her life chose the weekend closest to her birthday. And it gives us all a chance to, you know, it's a bit more of an organizational focus then to host the festival, so, so to speak, in that first weekend in May, uh, but certainly doesn't prevent us from hosting other walks uh, in the lead up to uh, the festival and any really any time of year. So there has been walks take place um, uh, throughout the year with different groups. And I think the main thing is to just to your point, Ian, if you were to get interested in 
coordinating a walk or working walking working with uh, your university campus uh, uh, clubs and societies groups or whatever it may be um, that once the website is back up and running too there are coordinated resources for self-organizing walks um, so that uh, we can support you in uh, in running just such a thing so yeah hopefully you can get that happening mm -hmm. I was just going to add on that, but yeah, there's a friend I have at the city of Toronto um, who I'd say he, I think it was last year's Jane's Walk Festival where he started a walk um, or did a walk then, um, but it was such a hit with fellow staff and friends. He does it about three times a year, um, not during the festival season. And he's actually not uh, doing to timing capacity, not taking part in this year's festival, but uh, literally he's repeated his walk throughout the year um because people have asked for it so again like the festival is a guidepost you don't need to take part in that and definitely i'd say like many planning schools economic uh classes many different um institutions even high school and i've even we were reached out to by some um uh middle school folks uh some kids uh a teacher wanting to use jane's walk as an opportunity for kids to highlight what's happening or um youth to highlight what's happening in their neighborhood so it can happen at any time in any way uh so definitely take it upon yourself to to lead a walk and if you need help with that we do have tons of resources um great suggestions I, i'm also thinking of mayor and council at and to have coffee clutches or or sort of some sort of outreach it doesn't have to necessarily be in a in a coffee shop it could start and end one but there's no reason why those um weekly or monthly discussions couldn't happen in, in, in a walk or a tour of of same area or certain or different areas um, over the course of a year also historical societies and museums have transferred their one-time jane's walk into a regular walking tour and i've seen some tourism organizations like destination management organizations turn them into uh, tourist focus walking tours to provide some sort of context for place uh, when someone's um, passing through and, and scheduled appropriately like say on a Friday night or Saturday morning uh, so that it coincides with with um, with visitor travel patterns or whoever your audience is for that matter so there's no end to um, the options with this it's just this is a great lightning rod to um, to make things start to happen and not wait for next year exactly and we didn't go too deep into it and I, we can always send resources out for like how to lead a walk but just always remember accessibility is there loud noises is there inclines like just think of that is there places for people to sit along the way can we take rest points and my other note i would always say is keep the conversation going just because the jane's walk ends you brought up a really good point ryan about coffee shops maybe after the walk's done you invite everyone to the local coffee shop so they're spending money in their local neighborhood like the conversation can keep going and it's a great way to like again break social isolation and create community so it doesn't have to end when we're like okay that's it see y'all later um it can keep going um or become a regular meetup and thanks to lee for sharing those resources about walks in the vancouver area as well it just puts me in mind too that um if you because you can't see the walks available uh, through our Jane's Walk main website right now, through the global website, um, there are a number of communities hosting Jane's Walks through other social networks, so Facebook and Instagram and so on. And, you know, please do a search. Like, there's a very active community uh, through the Facebook uh, particularly, but in other social spaces as well. So, and some like Vancouver and Calgary and uh, some of the larger cities um, have dedicated websites. So, you know, chop around and see if there's one uh, close to you as well. So, so we can uh, spend some time getting our website back up and running, but uh, also want to celebrate the festival this year. Um, so, um, yeah, look out both on social and also for those places that host their own websites as well. And feel free, we've just got five minutes left. I feel free to ask your questions here and, and or post them in the chat or, or email uh, the presenters directly later. I, I'm curious, are you seeing a, tr a certain trend or is it is it beyond trends as far as who is the newest audience for hosting Jane's Walks or the newest 
audience for uh, attending James Walks? Uh, is it the urban activists or is it? Um, so uh, my co-chair, uh, our co-chair is actually doing some research on this right now, her um, dissertations on kind of who leads at Jane's Walk and everything else. And there's actually been some other academic papers, which again, we can link out after. Um, so I'd say that traditionally, and this is like why we want to embed equity so deep into it, is that um, middle, higher income folks tend to, uh, in the past, have tended to lead Jane's Walk. And that's why we're putting so much more of an, uh, not that we haven't before, but putting more of an effort into really bringing folks that traditionally don't have a chance to speak to to the table to lead these um, kind of things. Um, I'd say um, uh, there's a over percentage of uh, 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 women identified folks also leading walks. Um, but again, um, like all of those things are meant to be broken. So let's break them. Um, and uh, we it's um, but the other things I'll say is, um, and I was speaking to Ryan prior to the call today, is um, a lot of festivals uh, took time off or didn't run their festival um, because it was a lot higher in logistics, et cetera, to run a digital festival. Um, so we have seen an influx of festivals around the world this year. Um, we've seen a lot um, that have came back from a resting period. Um, I brought up an example of Sault Ste. Marie in um, Northern Ontario. So, um, and again, there is small, small towns all across the world that do one walk a year. Um, it doesn't need to be, if you live in rural Canada or you live in rural North America or or further than, um, it doesn't have to be a city um, to think that you can run a Jane's Walk. I, I grew up in a small community and my, my hope and dream one day is to bring Jane's Walk to my small town, my very, very small town. So yes. That's awesome. And um, once that research, I can keep in contact with you, Ryan, but um, Celia will be wrapping up that research probably next year at some point, um, but would love to share that with your um, team as well, just on some of the findings she found out. Um, and uh, yeah, there's been some some academic writings about Jane's Walk, but I think that um, it's cool to kind of see. But uh, what I will say from my own work outside of Jane's Walk too, and then I'll pass it back, um, is that um, it's the same kind of look to a lot of our community leaders and a lot of who makes up um, citizen-led uh, projects. Like our, our community leaders tend to be more uh, uh, women identified folks tend to. Um, so it's it, it aligns with what I see across the other points of um, nonprofit sector and like uh, uh, similar areas of city building. Well, with two minutes to go uh, at the top of the hour, I want to respect everyone's time and, and, and let everyone move on to their next meeting or real lunch if uh, if they need to. But I uh, just want to let you, everyone know that this uh, will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel and also on our website. And this is under our, our public lecture archives. You can watch all the past ones every third Thursday. Uh, there and then coming up, we've got cultural food assets strengthening our local food economies by Janine De La Salle in May. And if you are really interested in what you've heard so far and playing a James Walk or not, please join us for any one of our SFU CED courses in our full certificate program, which are now I'm really excited to share, accredited by Can Do. So along with Canadian Credit Union Association and EDAC also can do as of just this week. So thank you very much. Have yourselves a great day. And uh, we'll end the formal presentation now and stick around for some questions.